everyone and welcome to a new absolute bare bones beginner series. So this will go over a lot of the changes that have happened with Unreal Engine 5 and just some workflow things and some naming conventions and other things to kind of keep in mind as you get started in game development. A lot of people kind of show you how the engine works but they don't really give you the, the, the kind of mindset things to have and the organizational things so we're gonna go over all that together uh, before we get into that though I do want to let y'all know that I'm also recording another series that is going to touch upon the RPG series and it's going to be fully online replicated so we're gonna kinda combine MMO style into the RPG style and move forward with a streamlined optimized series delving into all of that so that one I'm recording in bulk and then it'll be started uploading once it's fully completed. With this one though, I'm going to be uploading this one in the meantime to kind of get people up to speed and ready for that one. So without further ado, let us jump into it. So once you've downloaded the Epic Launcher, you open it up, you will see this page. After you create your account, you do all that. I know you can handle that part. I believe in you. Once you're on this page, you will navigate over to the library page. This is where your projects are stored, any asset packs you have. Stay tuned on the Epic Marketplace. Every first Tuesday of the month, they give you free stuff. I'm not going to break those down. There's like 50 people that do that. But, look, I have Project Wandering Syndrome. <laughs> but up here is where you will download your engine version. So if you click this plus sign, this is where you can select the... Uh, engine version you want for those of you that appreciate some chaos I have enough engine I'm good so I am going to be using 5.2.1 I like this one there are many like it but this one is mine so you'll click this launch button when it is once it is downloaded and installed it is substantial so make sure you got space install it somewhere that you can afford the space get out of here we don't need to see that you're active once you open it up, this is your project browser. So there's a bunch of different options. I don't know crap about any of these, so we're going to focus on this one because this is where I reside. So everything I show you, I will be done from the third person template, but there are a few differences between these. I like the third person because it's pretty changeable for what we need, but you can do Pretty much any of the blueprint stuff should work from anything. You just might have to make some subtle changes. So once you s select the one you want over here in the third person demo or description, down here in the project defaults, you'll pick your target platform. So whether you're going desktop or mobile, you'll set your quality preset. Now this is important for those of you who have maybe a little lower end on the computational spectrum. You can set this to scalable and it makes it a little bit more uh, performance friendly. Uh, I I usually tick, stick with maximum, I, but either one's fine. You can scale from either one, I think. The starter content is just a pack of doors, walls, windows, a few props, and some materials to help get you started. Ray tracing, uh, not really familiar with it right now, uh, but Professor said always just kind of leave that off, so I just leave that off. I think that's the RTX thing everyone's always talking about. So... Down here is where you can set your project name and where that thing will be stored. So the project location, and then you can name it here. So this is test project, etc., etc. You want to name it something, you know, relevant to what your project's going to be. So if you're making like an RPG, it can be RPG project or etc. But I already got one open. We're not going to go over that. Once you've opened your project, this is your window. I am not fond of this setup uh, unless I'm using dual monitor, but for the sake of tutorials, I turn off my other monitor so that everything is done on one screen just for you guys. So we're going to change this. If you go up here into the top left, under window, you can go to load layout and then the UE4 classic layout. I love this one because it has everything as standard. So just a quick little thing to get started. Over here is what they call the Place Actors tab. This is where you can find things like these are some basic things that go into every level. 
they have a lights submenu, so you want a spotlight. There's your spotlight. Skylight, directional light. We will go in more in depth into each one of these as we start doing our uh, beginner levels and scenes. I'm going to delete that one real quick. Over here are some basic primitive shapes. So for blocking out levels, these are typically what I use for sizing. And like, let's say I want this to be a house. It's basically like if you ever played with blocks when you were in kindergarten or last week. I don't judge. Uh, this is what you would use here. So you can build them, you can scale them, you can do what you want. You can make a giant egg for some reason. I don't know why. I mean, these are more cinematic materials, so you can create a level sequence actor. We'll get into all this later on. Uh, the most important ones for to get you started with is the shapes, lights. These are, it says geometry, these are actually BSP, which stands for Binary Space Partition. These are really good for blocking out scenes also because you can edit these, where you could bring out, oh, pff, I can't brag out that cube. You can bring out this cube and you can scale it. But if I bring out one of these cubes, you see it's kind of got, you can apply a different material to it, you can affect the size of the material, and there are other modes to where you can go in, which we will get into this later on, but they're really good for, I want to edit the shape of it, you can do just like this, and really customize that shape the way you want, even with some you can extrude it. There's a bunch of I know about that. Bunch of things you can do. Over here, let's get rid of that. Hang on. Boom, boom. Over here on the right, I'm gonna bring that down. This is your outliner. This lays out everything that is in your scene, and if you highlight something in your scene, it will tell you what it is. So that's my ramp. This is a chamfer cube. Etc. Etc. Everything that exists in your world exists in this list. And an important part of building your levels is learning how to organize it. So you'll see each one of these things has a little subfolder that you can create. So let's say you're creating a little house. You've got your primitives out. You're like, I want this to be like a little pathway or something. So here's a little road that leads up to my house object. And then here's like a mailbox. You, you get the gist. Sorry, I got I had to finish it at least. So you want this is all your house objects. So you can right click, you can create a folder, and we'll call this house props. And then you can select all of these and then drop it right there. And then if you ever think, oh I need to go back and affect some of my house pieces, then you can know exactly where they are in your outliner without having to hunt through fifty or a hundred or seventeen thousand different SM underscore cube number blah 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 because that gets that another thing to keep in mind is when you're doing stuff like that let's say this is pathway then you can hit F2 on your keyboard and call this SM underscore path and it can be SM underscore path one house path if you have a character who you want to live in that you can give it the name of the house so it's like SM underscore Jeffrey House or Path or what have you. Now, moving on from that, down here is your details panel. Now this outlines all the details of whatever you have selected. So, for instance, I'm going to select my little mailbox. And then down here, this is its world location, the rotation, the scale of it. So I can affect everything from here if I wanted to. If I don't want to do it in here, I can give precise numbers, know exactly where it exists in world space, affect the the mesh if I wanted to, all kinds of stuff in here. If I wanted it to simulate physics so that when I simulate, it'll actually fall. Now you notice this doesn't update. It's because it actually is just 
the actor location doesn't change, just the mesh is what has physics activated. Just something to keep in mind if you're trying to use physics to decorate a scene. Once you hit K on the keyboard, I did, I forgot to mention it, but I hit K on the keyboard and it's like keep, then it keeps the updated space. So, uh, uh, you know what, quick little fun addition. So if you drag out an object and you hit Alt on the keyboard before you drag, you can create duplicates pretty quickly. And then Control Select will let you select a lot of them, simulate physics on all of them, Hit K. Well, the K didn't keep. Probably got to do them one at a time. See, save state for sphere. And then now these, I didn't hit K. Let's see if we can do them all at once. Oh, yeah, save state. I guess I just, you got to activate this viewport once it hits play again. I hit K without doing that. So, keep that in mind. Drag these up. Simulate. Make sure you activate your viewport and then hit K and it'll update. So, yeah, just a fun little aside to enjoy. But yeah, that that will affect, you can see the material that's applied, all that kind of stuff. Down here is your content browser, and this is where you will spend quite a majority of your time either browsing through assets or finding what you're trying to update. And this is what I'm going to bring this up a little bit. Now if you've done something like this and you're affecting the size of things as you go and you're like, I want to try to get it back the way it was because I like the way it looks, I don't remember the size, just hit window, load layout, UE4. But back over to the, back over, give me a second, it's cold out and now my computer's frozen, it. sometimes that will happen. Uh, let's do this. Bear with me for a second. I apologize. Uh, let me throw something up on the screen. Do, 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 do. Technical difficult. Okay. So once you're back in your project, it didn't save, so everything's gone. But uh, over here is where your content browser is, and then the assets that you import, this is where they will be stored. So you'll start off with a few things. They got the characters set up. So here's the mannequins. So level prototype. I don't know if yours will have this. Uh, I'm going to get that off screen. Um, these little icon folders. I don't remember. I've uh, affected some parameters. I don't think that one might be in yours. It might be. It might not be. I don't remember. But level prototyping. These are some really good meshes. These are also really good for blocking out. I like these because of where the pivot is located. So when you scale or move something in a world, it's dependent on where the pivot is at. So, for instance, if I grab out one of these cubes and I scale it, let's say I'm scaling it on the Y, so you would expect it goes that way, but it's going to go in both directions because it scales uniformly depending on where that pivot is at. Now, as of right now, I'm unfamiliar with any way to actually fully, uh, like, completely change the pivot location and keep it but if you have a cube out and you want to update where it's at so you wanted it to just scale from one side you can hold alt and middle click and you can drag it around but it will reset so let's say I set it to the top by holding alt middle clicking and then dragging and then now when I scale it it'll scale according to that. Once it kind of loses itself and refreshes, it goes back. But that's where some of these come in handy because it's got a good pivot location off jump so we can just kind of scale it, get some walls going and then let's say you want to rotate it and the way I duplicated that just by rotating is if you alt, alt is your duplication so if you alt and click and that is dangerously close to going towards a slow. Um, you duplicate, so I can alt click and move, and I can duplicate as many as I want, where I want. I don't know if it works for scale. Let's find out. 
it does not work for scale. It, does, it would make sense that it does not work for scale. But yeah, that's how you do that. So like I said, a lot of people will tell you this kind of stuff. But what I want to tell you about is also the uh, organizational things. So it's very easy once you start importing a bunch of stuff and you're creating your blueprints and your characters and your actors and your weapons, you will sometimes in the beginning it, it can get messy and it can get lost because when I first started what I would do is I would import a weapon pack and then I would be like well I'll create all my blueprint weapon actors here in this pack and then I'll know weapons are in the weapons folder it's good in theory but once you've got like a lot of different kind of asset packs and blueprint actors and you've got to keep going back and forth through a bunch of different folders it could be a headache so what I like to do is I pick this third person folder and I will you can rename this I oh wait I think you can hmm I am not going to rename that I'm going to delete that main folder so do not rename it because it has update unless you want to update that INI file but what you can do is you can change the color so let's right click I usually just end up changing the color I don't rename it I was just giving you all that one <laughs> So we can set the color. So right click right here, set color. And you can pick a color. You can pick any color to make it stand out. I typically go with a blue for the blueprint main folder. And then inside we have our inputs and our levels. And then this is where our character in game mode actively is. So this is where I usually build off of and make all of my important files. So this is the other one I also set the color, new color and 0 0.5, 0 0.5, because I like that kind of teal, as my daughter calls it. And then in here is where, let's say we're creating, um, we're going to start working on our inventory system, for example, right? So we'll right click and we will create a new folder and we'll call this inventory data. And what kind of things do we need for an inventory? So we'll have our interfaces so that we can have our blueprint interface for us to be able to pick up things we'll have our um, item lists and this is where you'll get into what's what I, I I think it's called nesting it's like those little dolls that you open it up it's got one more inside and you open it up the other one's got another one inside this is kind of the same thing so you'll have item lists or actually let's just create one more and this will be the actual items that you'll create and then you can open that up and then you can have consumables and then a folder over here that's like weapons and then inside the consumables you might have health items or stamina items etc and so you uh, just creating the folders you can see how many different things you might have there might be a hundred different things in each one of these but what's good about this is it is all right there so I know I need to affect my items it's in my inventory data folder which is right in my main offshoot folder here we go and then I'm wanting to affect the actual item actors I just go here I'm wanting to do fix a consumable and it might be a little bit of clicking through folders but you will know exactly where everything is at and believe me buddy that will save you so much time and your hairline will thank you because I have long hair but I'm going bald and I partially because of stuff like this <laughs> learn from my mistakes so uh, oh let me change this back to selective viewport up here is your selection mode let's, let's we got a few more things to touch on I kind of went on a tangent and D despair post um so let's go up here up here is your selection modes we will be going over every single one of these uh except for animation because i will be covering that in blender later on because i've been practicing that and for now we are in selection mode so this is basically i can select i can select you i can select that it's pretty self-explanatory right here is your add items it is essentially kind of like this folder right here uh, but you also have access to your content browser windows the unreal marketplace 
Quixel Bridge. I don't mess with Quixel Bridge much, but I hear very good things about it. I don't really do high, high quality detail items very much because it takes up too much space, in my opinion. I like stylized, personally. But, you know, to each their own. Anyway, sorry, tangent. Um, you can import new things. They got the place actors. Just like over here, you have the same. There's the basic one, the lights, shapes. So you can get rid of this if you want to just by clicking that X. And then use this as that. And you can even, if you do, get rid of that. And you're like, but I want that window back. I miss him. Then you just click it and it's right there. This is a blueprint folder. So you can create a new empty blueprint. Open a blueprint from anything. So if you're like, don't want to search through it. And you're just like, I need my health item. You can type in health or whatever. Uh, let's see. For right now, we have a third person character or third person game mode. So you can search like that. There is a level blueprint. I don't do too terribly much in these, uh, but for a few example things we will, just to kind of show you some cool things before we go into the more advanced functionality of it. But this is for this is a blueprint that exists for the entire level. Probably helps to explain what a blueprint is. I'm sure most of you are familiar with blueprints, but just a little. This is basically the brain of your actor component thingy. So you can decide what it looks like, what's attached to it in your components tab, etc, etc. And then this is where the brain stuff goes. So what happens when it begins? What happens when I push this button that I've determined in an elsewhere area? what happens here this stuff kind of looks complicated when you're first getting into it it is not I promise you if I can pick it up I guarantee all of you can too I believe in you we'll get rid of this for right now this one is our sequences level sequences are super cool super fun it's basically like the little movie you can create uh, I'll show you that sometime soon but it's super cool you're gonna love it I do <laughs> And right here is the big green play button. So this is how you can get in, run around, jump. How you doing? Jumping around. Spacebar is jump, WASD movement, W-A-S-D, and mouse to look around. And that's pretty much what you start with. Got our handy dandy little mannequin girl, or womanikin, whatever you want to call And so I've kind of meandered and rambled a little bit, and I apologize if this one seemed a little... Uh, like that meandering the next ones will be more streamlined i just kind of kind of giving you a bunch to kind of get familiar with all at once but we're going to be going this is more overview and then the next ones they will be isolated so we'll go over specifically lighting tips and tricks how to get it to look just right post-processing how to make the colors pop things like that we'll be doing a lot so hope you're looking forward to it as much as i am and before I let you go, oh, that's the wrong button. Before I let you go, if you're interested in more hands-on, one-on-one uh, approach, I am on Fiverr. I'll leave a link to this in the description. Absolutely no pressure. I want to say that right now. You do not have to if you don't want to. I understand money is tight in a lot of places. I tried to make it as competitively priced as I could. Um, so it's $40 for a one-hour, one-on-one the hour is not a limited to an hour that gets you at least an hour so like if you do get it and we're we're discussing something and it's we haven't solved a problem per se just yet and it goes on to an hour and a half i will not just be like oh your time's up gotta go bye no unless it's like somebody scheduled and then i go to them and then i come back to you i promise you i will not abandon you in your woe. I will be there for you until we solve the problem. Even if we have to grow old and gray together, I will help you as much as I can. Within reason. <laughs> anyway, sorry about that. Uh, I've had like three cups of coffee, so I'm a little amped up. So, yeah. So, yeah, if you enjoyed this, uh, stay tuned for the next one. And then for you more advanced folks, or for you who are getting more advanced than... Uh, Stay tuned for the online RPG series that will be coming soon. It is in the recording process and should be made available fairly soon. So, all right.
I hope you all have a good night, and I'll see you all later.